Hello, welcome back to the James Rambling Reviews for yet another episode. And in today's episode, if you couldn't tell by the lead-in intro we did to this review, I'm actually going to be taking a look at the recent Doctor Who 60th anniversary specials. I just thought I would add that intro in for a for dramatic effect and stuff like that. So before I dive into my thoughts on this actual 60th anniversary special and give my thoughts and stuff like that, I'll just give you a bit of context here, right? So when it comes to Doctor Who, right, I'm somebody that really, really loves David Tennant's old era from the 2000s, watched Christopher Eccleston, and as, as I've established on the James Ramon show, right, I'm somebody that's been re-watching this stuff, and as of today, I actually watched End of Time Part 1 and 2, which is like this Doctor Who special from a, from two thousand the 2000s, right, and it's got like, how David Tennant re- regenerates into Matt Smith, the next Doctor, and the stuff like that, and I just love Doctor Who, it's this very well-known British series about this time lord that travels through time, goes through all these events, defeats all these bad guys, has companions, stuff like that, so I won't beat around the bush when it comes to what Doctor Who is, you know what it is, it's a famous British series, so that once it comes to it comes to the 60th anniversary specials, right, I'll just give you this rundown of that. So pretty much what this is, is that David Tennant comes back, Russell T Davies comes back, right, and you've got Donna Noble, and you've got these three episodes that they all do together. They're all about an hour each, just about an hour each, right, and, and so the first episode is called Stabbies, the second episode is called Wild Blue Yonder, Third episode is called The Giggle, which I did actually watch a couple hours back, and I've got I've given myself enough time to understand what the show, what the episode is about, and get, I gather my thoughts and stuff like that. And so when it comes to that, right, I did say on the James Rambling show that I watched Star Beast. It was okay, I guess, and Star Beast all all revolved around like how this is like the opening to the 60th anniversary special stuff like that, right? And you had you had Rose. You had like the 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 creature meep or whatever, and I I thought the episode was okay at best, and I still believe that right. I still believe that I thought the episode was okay to say the least. And it wasn't. It's not my favorite episode, and Rose what Rose as a character wasn't like the greatest either. Like she didn't have the best performance in the universe or anything like that. And so I did. I did go into that already, and I watched that episode two or three weeks ago. And another like little detail about this is that I didn't binge all of these episodes either. So it's kind of like, you know, I've tried to gather my thoughts so that once it comes to, once it comes to like Wild Blue Yonder, I never shared my thoughts on the James Ramblin show, but I thought this episode Wild Blue Yonder, right? I actually think this is the best of the three episodes, right? And the reason for that is that the episode, right, you get David Tennant, you get Donna Noble, right, they're coming back again. The episode does start off slow, I will say that, but once it starts, once everything starts unfolding and it get, makes more sense, it's fun and enjoyable and very entertaining as an episode. So there is there is some, like, special effects where it looks goofy and their arms, like, the concept, like, the arms get bigger and there's two versions of Donna and two versions of Donna and David, right, and the and their arms are huge and they look stupid and over the top when they're fighting each like like the like Donna and Tennant they're running away from two other versions of themselves and they're trying to fight two other versions of themselves and it was this in, it's kinda of like this interesting horror y kind of concept that I that I enjoyed. I I just thought it was amazing. There's also this really, really good cameo from Donna Noble's dad towards the end of the episode and I just thought, man, it was the best of the three. So 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 I've said my thoughts on the Star Beast episode. I've said my thoughts on on the whole thing to do with Wild Blue Yonder that I watched over a week ago, I wanna say. So when it comes to the giggle right, this is the final episode of the three episodes in this entire sixtieth anniversary run where David Tennant comes back to play the doctor again. And so what this episode is is that You've got this toy maker in the nineteen twenties, right? And in the nineteen twenties, right, and, and you've got that and you've got 
David Tennant and Don and Noble again, but he, the toy maker is actually this guy that's like the villain of this and stuff like that. There's this interesting concept about how there's the invention of the TV by the by the, the Scottish guy, right, and stuff like that, and you get to see this concept at first. It's kind of interesting, but in my opinion, as the episode progressed, I felt like the the main villain of this episode just felt like a huge joke rather than a huge threat. And what do I mean by that? Like, he acts silly, he has this German accent, and just like there's like even this point in the episode where the special effects on him, he looks he looks like he turns into like an Amazon delivery box or something. Like, like it's just this cardboard, and he goes into this box, and it was definitely not the best. And there's also this whole thing with them trying to explain the bi generation. So in the episode, right, you've got this whole the giggle concept going on. You've got the toy maker, but you've also got this idea about how there's the bi. Like the, and the, during the episode, like they randomly regenerate David Tennant, right, and so you get the new Doctor Shudigawa, and they generate at the same time, and they're like stuck to each other's bodies. And it didn't really make sense. They didn't have any prior, prior build up here, right? So, it made no sense. Happens randomly, but I actually thought that that Shudigat, no Shudigat, well, however you say it, his performance was actually not bad. Like he seemed like he was happy in the role. He was having a bunch of fun, and it was nice to see that sort of thing go down and and the stuff like that, right, it felt like, it felt like the giggle went on, like, it felt like the episode was really, really short for some reason, and it kind of rushed past these ideas that could have been executed way better than they actually were, and so, and so I guess that is kind of a, my opinion on the Doctor Who 60th anniversary specials, this will be a bit longer compared to some previous James Rowland review episodes, but just understand that we are talking about three episodes at the same time. So what would I give these episodes out of ten? So when it comes to when it comes to Star Beast, I would have to say that this episode was definitely like a five out of ten. It was average. It wasn't the most groundbreaking. I would have to give Wild Blue Yonder a seven out of ten. And I have to give the giggle like a six out of ten. Like the stuff, like the stuff about the bi generation and the concept with the villain and or the execution wasn't the best. But seeing how Nishuti Gatwa was, his performance, he tried his best, and the, even the actor of the of the toy maker did the best he could. So it wasn't like the worst thing ever. But it's definitely still a mixed bag because you can tell I have these flaws about it while enjoying things while flaws and enjoying it and stuff like that so hope you enjoyed this episode of the james rambling reviews it's going to be longer than previous reviews so that's kind of how i feel about it let me know in the comments how you felt about the doctor who specials right and obviously this these episodes weren't going to live up to david tennant's old legacy from the get-go anyways but i'm at least i'm not giving you a 40 minute episode on how you know this woke like rose character destroyed the entire series or how there was the historical figure that shows up randomly at the start of wild blue yonder that got race well why this kind of stuff right so yeah see you for another episode of the james rambling reviews where this is absolutely another rambling review for you so yeah bye do 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 Doctor Who, 60th anniversary, James Allen reviews, bye.